Who is the power broker? That is the million dollar question that is looming over the Falcon and the Winter Soldiers miniseries. We have a lot of candidates that have come up in discussions, in theories, whether it be on Reddit, whether it be on YouTube. So many people have chimed in on who they believe the power broker is. Now from the little bit that we know in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, he seems to be tracing or following our villains or who we presume to be the villains, the Flag Smashers. In episode two, one of the Flag Smashers gets a text from the power broker saying, oh, you took something that belongs to me and I will find you. I'm paraphrasing, but something to that effect. And we got a little bit of a glimpse somewhat of the henchmen of the power brokers, again, allegedly, that caught up with the Flag Smashers at the airport. We know from episode three that he is a big player in Madripoor. Now, if you're not familiar with the power broker in the comics, in the comics, he is attributed with giving ordinary people superhuman abilities. Hence why in the show, a lot of people think that he is going to do the same. That's why the super soldier serum has become a bit of a player in this miniseries. Now, I believe this is a huge misdirect, but we'll get to that part in a little bit. Just a little bit of another side note, the character of Power Broker was kind of made as a goof on the fitness and health, you know, people or industry, however you want to see it. It was kind of a jab at that, but that's more of a comedic side to the Power Broker. I believe that the word power broker, people are taking it too literal. I know the super soldier serum that is again, quote unquote in play is the reason for the association. But if we've learned anything from Marvel's 11 year now run going on 12 is that they use misdirects like no other and if we are taking what we saw in wandavision we know that they put red herrings and deliberate misdirects that are so intentional that some fans find it a little bit distasteful and a little bit disrespectful and almost poking fun at us so i developed or i put the six most likely candidates the six being the one that I think is the power broker in this mini series. And it's not by most likely to less likely or less likely to most likely It's just the six ones, the last one. So that's the one, the big surprise of who I think is the power broker. Since this mini series has come out, theories have gone crazy speculation as to who it will be. After this latest release, episode three, the new number one candidate, according to the internet and YouTube, is Sharon Carter because of the unprecedented power that she now seems to have since she's been on the run and kind of has become a criminal. So in Madripoor, or she's kind of made a good life for herself, being an arts dealer or a arts broker. She basically is trafficking art through high clients. And I use that word broker deliberately because I think again, people are, are making it too literal as that the power broker is going to somehow give people power, which Marvel does not do that in any shape, way or form. They adapt storylines and then they play around with it. To, as of today, Sharon Carter seems to be the new princess, pun intended, I guess, of who is going to be the power broker. And I think the internet is partially right or 50% right, because I do think Sharon Carter is working with the power broker 
that I will reveal as my last pick. But because she is now the number one seed as to whom is the power broker, I figured I would start with it. I just don't think she is. I don't think Marvel will, they will make that her arch as far as where we go from here. I think because she's been on the run, that she has had to do whatever she has to do to survive and she said that pretty clearly so i think again she's she's half of the equation but not the whole equation another one from the beginning the number one seed that was the dethroned by sharon carter because of this episode three the number one going into the premiere of falcon and the winter soldier was thaddeus ross aka thunderbolt ross I also think this is just incorrect due to the fact that he's going to play a bigger part in the Black Widow movie. And given the fact that the Black Widow movie has been pushed back to now being third opening in July 9th of this year, I don't think that they will have a reveal like that knowing that if everything was coming, every, if there was no pandemic, we would have already seen Black Widow and I don't think that either one of those things will, I don't think Marvel will spoil something either way, either before or after the fact. So, and I get that a lot of people want to see the Thunderbolts and we might get them in the future. I just don't think it's his time right now. I take away Thaddeus Ross, but if you think why I'm wrong and why you think it's Thaddeus Ross, leave that in the comments, but I scratch him off the list. The number three candidate, as of episode two, everyone thought it was going to be Isaiah Bradley because of the story that he told and people associated that with how angry he would be and how he would want to get back at those that wrong him. And I don't blame people for thinking of that because in an essence, kind of a weird way, if you take the power broker title to heart, you could see how he said that, oh, they were taking my blood and experimenting it. So he is the source, quote unquote, of the super soldier, the new super soldier serum that we found out in episode three. I get why people jumped on that train, but given the fact that Marvel is using him as a, and in the comics, he does take the mantle of Captain America, the first African-American captain america i just don't think marvel will disrespect that character in that way to make him a villain so i think that takes him right out of the running number four which was kind of weird to me that people are bringing him up is armin zola he is the one of the villains of captain america the first avenger and the it's weird how they come up with this theory because they seen some TVs on in episode three that resemble the ones that he was in uh, Captain America Winter Soldier. I just don't think that's even close to a possibility. Given the fact that we already in episode three and there's only six seasons, I think it would be way too much of a backstory to fill in. They might be able to fill that in in an episode, maybe episode four if they were to, but I just think that one is really, really far-fetched. Number five that I have is Zemo. Maybe Zemo is the one playing the, you know, pulling the strings from jail and is misdirecting because he wants to get to the source of who was making the super soldier serum. And as we saw in episode three, where he shoots the scientists that developed the new super soldier serum, maybe he is, but given the fact that it's only episode three, I just can't see zemo playing both sides of the fence even though he has the money now we we see he has definitely has the resources he has people in high places and he could be misdirecting both bucky and and sam when he when they asked if he knows the power broker and he goes oh only by reputation he might be gassing himself up and number five i think now my number i might be a little off on my numbers but number five has been a mystery character that we have not yet seen and it's the same thing with zola i just don't think it's a mystery character that it's going to we're already halfway through the season to have a brand new character being introduced 
to this show and only giving us, you know, two more episodes after he's introduced. If he is introduced in episode four, given the fact of the rumors of episode five and how emotional is going to be, I just don't think that that is the case of a, of, of a unknown yet to be discovered character. So here is my choice for who is the power broker. Drum roll, please. US agent John Walker. Now I know there's theories out there that have already speculated on maybe it was him, but after episode one, it's died down and I think they were on the right scent, but obviously with all the misdirect that Marvel is having, I think that they've all forgotten about him. Now I know what people are saying, oh, he's US agent and that's who he's going to play. And, and I get all that, you know, from the costume, from everything that he's doing it, it, again, the misdirect of Marvel is very, very strong, but who else wants to find the flag smashers and has shown an interest in that? besides Bucky and Sam. It's been US agent, hasn't it? Who has more to win by finding them? And maybe he already injected himself with the super soldier serum, if that's the case, or who would want to inject himself with the super soldier serum. Now, in one of my reviews and one of my theories, I said that it was really, it was kind of weird the way when they show the news clippings of him throwing the shield around, what velocity and what kind of power he was showing in that agility. And also when he's fighting on top of the semis and he takes that punch and he lands in the car, he feels nothing. He gets up and just unhooks the helmet. So I find that very suspicious. I think that he is the power broker and not because he wants to give the power to anyone. Look at what he's done throughout the series. When we first get introduced to Bucky, he's in therapy mandated by the, by the country that he has to check in. And if he doesn't, he goes to jail. You know, when he breaks the rules, I guess who breaks him out, who takes him out of jail and says no more mandated therapy, no more everything. It was John Walker, us agent. He has the power as you would say, power broker. Again, that's why I use the analogy with the art broker, you know, like an art dealer who has the ability to be able to make things happen, who has the ability to supersede almost us law or government law, who has, who has shown us that already in this mini series that he has the motive, he has the pool. And if you want to take it a little bit nerdy around, if you, if you want to look at the comic book character and the way John Walker looks aesthetically, it's pretty much a nice match as far as, uh, as aesthetically. So I think, like I said earlier with the Sharon Carter, I think Sharon Carter and us agent are working together and now they're trying to find the flag smashers that are a little bit of a anti heroes that at the end of the series, we'll find it, find out that they were on the right side, even though as of episode three, I think her name is Carly. If I, I might be wrong, but after she blew up the soldiers and killed a bunch of soldiers and did those terrorist like acts, I think that's Marvel painting her as a, ter as a terrorist and misdirecting us to think that yes, these are the villains when in reality it's been us agent or john walker working with sharon carter as the power brokers and the ones pulling the strings that they understood the need for superheroes before the blimp happened and then once Thanos snap happens you know we we get the the disposition as far as like hey you know, when the, when the doctor came back and said, oh yeah, the power broker hired me to recreate the super soldier serum, because I think that was the plan all along from John Walker, AKA the power broker alongside with Sharon Carter, the art broker working together in a, some sort of a criminal mastermind. Now I think again, like I said with Sharon Carter, I think she's being misled. She's being manipulated 
That's why she was willing to help out Sam and Bucky, even though she might have a little bit of a grudge. But I think for the at the end of the show, we'll find out that she was being misled. But that is just my theory and my number one pick for who is the power broker is John Walker, U.S. agent, or how, how I will see him from now on, the power broker. So that is my theory. I would love to hear your opinions on it. And who do you think is going to be the power broker in this miniseries? I can't wait to read and hear all your opinions. And like always, that's a wrap.